Hello everyone, my name is Reza Dorani and uh, today I'm going to talk about an alternative method to appending comments to a SharePoint list item. Audrey Gordon shared a video yesterday uh, showcasing one of the options of appending comments in which she created another list and created uh, a lookup column to, uh, to maintain comments in a separate list and then fetched it using Microsoft Flow and used Power Apps to to fetch the data from the secondary list to show the commands that are being uh, stored for that specific list item. In this case, what we are do what we are going to do is we're going to use uh, the same list. We're not going to create a secondary list. That's number one. Uh, number two, we will be using the rich text control to, to adding commands, so rich text commands, and we won't be using any versioning. So when I create a new column, so here's my list called methods. I'm going to create a multi-line text field called commands. I have the option of enabling pen changes to existing text, which will enable versioning on the list item because that's how that functionality works. I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to enable the rich text functionality for this uh, commands field. I'm going to hit save. And also, I'm going to create a field called count commands, which is going to give me the number of commands that were added or appended to my methods list item. So I'm going to hit save. So uh, this is a rich text commands field. I'm going to go and customize this SharePoint list form using Power Apps. And what this is going to do is it's going to open uh, the Power Apps editor associated with my list form customization. It's going to create a connection that is going to associate it with my a list called methods and that connection is called the SharePoint integration. You can see it right here. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to click on this. You can see the data sources methods. It's going to create a screen uh, and in that it's going to add my form which I am going to first rename to methods form. All right. Now I'm going to try and zoom this. So for my methods form, as you can see, it has four data cards by default that gets added, title, commands, count commands, attachments. I don't need attachments in this case. So I'm just going to remove it. Let's focus on commands. As you can see, if I edit the commands field, I have multiple options. By default, it goes to edit text, which is single line of text. I can make it multi-line or I can make it rich. In my case, the control at the back end can store rich text data because I enabled it for my multi-line text field. So I'm going to pick the edit rich text function here. And as you can see, what this is going to do is it's going to add a rich text control in my data card. Now I'm going to increase the height of this data card and uh, I'm going to make modifications to this data card. Why? Let me first save this power app uh, SharePoint list customization first. And let's get back to the methods list. So here's my list. I'm going to clear my browser cache. So if I try and add a new item, this should pop up my Power Apps form. And let's say I create an item. This is a rich text control. So here's my first command. I'm going to save this. This will store my data in. And if I go back, it's going to still give me that same control, the same command that I can make modifications to. Right? I can, I can change the data here and save it. So it's not appending the commands. It's just one control associated to the commands field. And it's going to allow me to only make modifications to it. It's not appending the commands to it. So now if I go back to my Power App, the first thing what I want to do is I want to create a control that every time when this form loads for the user, especially in edit and new mode, the commands field pops up as empty. So first thing what I'm going to do is in order to make changes to a data card, you need to unlock the data card. So I'm going to unlock this and this data card value five, which is going to hold the main value for my commands. I'm going to make this visible false. I don't need this. Okay. What I am going to do instead is I'm going to add another rich text control right here in this data card. And this is where the user will enter his or her commands. I'm going to increase the height of this and increase the height of this data card as well. I'm going to remove the default text that comes with a rich text control. So this is where the user can enter the commands and we're going to call this rich text commands. 
Also, I want to showcase all the appended commands right below this or the his historical commands right below this. So for that, I am going to add a HTML text control and I'm going to place this right below this control and I'm going to call this uh, append commands HTML. Okay. And this one is going to give me the values which are stored in the data card. So all I need to do is data card value five dot HTML text. That's it. <coughs> also, if you look at the comments box, I want to only show this comment box when the user is a new or edit mode because when the user is in view mode, the data is anyways going to be showcased here. There's no space for him to enter commands. So the visible property for this control we're going to do is if the form, which is my methods form dot mode is equal to form mode dot view. So if this is in view mode, you hide this. Otherwise you show this control. That's the first thing. Second thing, I want this control to be sitting right above or right below this control. Currently, I have manually moved this control to sit exactly there. If I go back to the visible property, I showed this control only if uh, visibility is, uh, if the form mode is view. There's also a height property associated with this. It's 222 right now. What I am going to do is if this form is in view mode, set the height to zero, otherwise set the height to 222. That's all I'm doing. And also this control is relative to this control. In order to do that, what I need to do is I'm going to pick this control and go to the Y property for my append commands HTML control. And what we are going to do is we're going to make it relative to the rich text commands control. So it's going to be rich text commands dot Y, which is the Y axis plus the height of that control. So this sits exactly below this. So if the height is zero, it's going to go on top. If it's not, it's going to adjust itself and be relative to the position of the rich text commands field that I added. Now, how does the appending happen? Well, if I go back to my data card, there's a property called default, which is this item dot commands. So now what we are going to do is we are going to, we are going to add the value from this control and append it to this item dot commands. But we want to only do that when the user has actually entered commands. So going back to the data card, first thing what we're going to do is we're going to have an if condition. So if the user has entered data, so if the rich text commands dot html text is not blank so if this is not blank what i want to do is add the html so that's the commands that the user entered rich text commands dot html and go add a space here so we're going to add this to the comments which shows the comments that were stored in the control right also, if you want the new commands and the next commands to be uh, segregated by a new line character, what we can also do is replace this with something called as character 13. This embeds a new line character in Power Apps. There might also be a case wherein you want to store the username and the current date and time when these comments were entered in this box. So there's a function in Power Apps called user. So user.fullName will give me the full name of the user. And then I want to add the date and time in which this operation was performed. So that's another function called now. And then I'm going to append the commands to this and then add a new line character to it. So that's it. I'm just checking to see if this control has a value, add the users, the current user's name, the date and time when this operation was performed, the commands that have been entered, add a new line character and append it to the original value of the commands that were stored. So that's, that's part one. Part two, we have a another data card called count commands. I'm going to unlock this data card. Firstly, I don't want the user to make changes to this data card, so or not even show this data card to the user. So I'm going to make this visible false. This data card as well has a default property, which is this item dot count commands. But what I want to do is I want to add the value one to this counter. So basically, I want to I want to add a value to this counter every time the user enter a enters a command in the command box. So how do I do that? There's a function called sum. So what I can do is I need to sum what? So I need to sum, again, the same check, 
if not off is blank because it's, it's a possibility the user has not entered comments so the rich text comments dot html text if this is not blank you add the value one otherwise you add the value zero and sum it up with the existing value of the commands and that's it that's going to give me the count of the commands once i've made all these changes i'm going to go and hit save so this writes the data back to power apps and sorry to, to the sharepoint list and i'm going to publish this changes back to my sharepoint list now if i go back to my sharepoint list and if i clear my cache let's also delete the first item that i created i'm going to create a brand new item here and let's refresh this it still looks cached to me there you go so when the user is trying to add a new item if you notice it's just showing me comments and uh, the edit in edit mode so i'm going to create an item called demo and i'm going to add my first command and this is a rich text field and as you can see as i'm typing it's appending the data to the, at the bottom right as i'm adding my command it's it's getting added right here at the bottom and i'm going to save this so this is going to store my first command and as you can see count commands became one if i edit this item and let's say for some reason i add a second command there you go here's the second command that's getting appended at this date and time with the current logged in user's account and if i hit save this is going to append it so that's it and it's also increased the counter to two so as easy as that thank you so much for watching